Last of Carson Wentz. I think it's a legitimate question. He hasn't made up his mind yet what he's going to do when Wentz is healthy enough to play, which is soon, maybe even almost now. Does Wentz go back on the field for Washington? I'm going to be honest. This is not good if you happen to be either Carson Wentz or a fan of Carson Wentz. By the way, are there fans of Carson Wentz? I'm just curious. I have nothing against you. I just don't think I've ever seen like a bona fide Carson Wentz stan in any of my comment sections or just someone defending Carson Wentz in general. So we have a lot of information to bring to you guys, man, in regards to the starting QB situation with the Washington Commanders and the future for Carson Wentz. Before we get to the content, make sure you drop a like, subscribe, and turn on our notifications to help the channel grow. And check out our channel memberships program and Patreon if you want to further contribute to the channel. Not expected, always appreciated. Now that we got all that out of the way, break! Mic check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? Man, the NFL is so freaking unpredictable. I mean, everything about Carson Wentz's career is so fascinating to me. I mean, I remember in the 2017 season when he was going on that MVP season run where he threw 33 touchdowns to seven interceptions, led the Philadelphia Eagles to 11 wins and only two losses before unfortunately sustaining an injury. I just thought to myself, damn, I'm gonna have to deal with this guy twice a year as a cowboy fan, and it's not gonna be a good time at all whatsoever. It was really interesting because in 2017, after he went down with an injury, Nick Foles famously was able to take the Philadelphia Eagles all the way to the Super Bowl and win the Super Bowl. Now, obviously, it wasn't 100% Nick Foles is doing. It was a variety of factors. The RPO was just introduced to the NFL and was being utilized phenomenally. I mean, Nick Foles was running it to perfection and the Philadelphia Eagles defense was pretty solid on top of that. And I don't know if there's ever been a scenario like this where a backup quarterback was able to take his team in the latter part of the season all the way to the Super Bowl and win it. I know you're going to name drop Tom Brady, but Tom Brady was much earlier in the season. Nick Foles was significantly later in the season. And if Carson Wentz had been healthy, there's no doubt in anyone's mind that he would have been the starter at that time. Little did we know that this would be a theme in Carson Wentz's career. His backups quote unquote outplaying him. The very next year, Carson Wentz, 69.6% .6 completion percentage, a near 10% improvement. He threw 21 touchdowns and seven interceptions, played in 11 games and threw for over 3000 yards. The year after in 2019, again, 27 touchdowns, seven interceptions, over 4,000 passing yards. The Philadelphia Eagles went nine and seven that year. 2020 was when things started to get a little crazy. I mean, I will say this is kind of to do with both the Philadelphia Eagles and just the holes in Carson Wentz's game just coming out for all of us to see. I mean, from a play calling perspective, Doug Peterson's over aggressive play calling was just not appropriate for the situation that the Philadelphia Eagles were in. Carson Wentz played a lot of hero ball. He threw into windows that he shouldn't have thrown in. And when you have good receivers, you could get away with that. But in the case of Carson Wentz, he had players like Travis Fulgham catching the football for him. The Philadelphia Eagles also, for some reason, drafted Jalen Hurts following the 2019 season, which at the time I was shocked about because when you looked at Wentz's statistics, he was just fine at quarterback. He just had some durability issues. Well, little did we know that Jalen Hurts' presence caused a lot of frustration for Carson Wentz, and it was a situation that that we've covered extensively at the time it happened, including a scenario where Doug Peterson literally tanked a game on national television with Jalen Hurts as his QB. And that off season, we all thought that the Eagles were either gonna choose between Carson Wentz or Doug Peterson. I personally felt like they should have kept Doug Peterson around because whenever a coach wins a Super Bowl for you, he should have a much, much longer leash. That's just my opinion. Ultimately, the Eagles are fine with what happened. They would trade Carson Wentz to the Indianapolis Colts 
and to be fair that ended up being one of the best decisions they've ever made now when Carson Wentz went to the Indianapolis Colts I felt like it was a perfect fit for him Colts finally get a young franchise cornerstone QB that has familiarity with their head coach Frank Reich Carson Wentz is in a scenario with I guess you could say slightly improved wide receivers and weapons a much better offensive line although the offensive line underperformed during Carson Wentz's time there and for the most part if you look at him statistically he performed fine the issue is despite throwing 27 touchdowns and seven interceptions those seven interceptions came at like the worst time that they possibly could have came the best example of this was his final game as an Indianapolis Colt versus the Jacksonville Jaguars a team that would literally get the number one overall pick the year after in a game that was not only a trap game but a win and you're in game versus the Jacksonville Jaguars Carson Wentz performed horrifically and as a result the Colts weren't able to make it to the playoffs in the offseason the Indianapolis Colts decided to cut their losses and don't get me wrong because the Colts have been making some very interesting decisions in their own right now I'm starting to think maybe they parted with Wentz too early or maybe they were too trigger happy based upon how their season has gone so far I wouldn't say it's an egregious mistake but I'm not necessarily looking at the Colts right now and saying hey this is a team that's making sound decisions although I really hope Jeff Saturday continues to succeed and crushes it as a head coach for the most part some of the decisions that they're making are a little peculiar but regardless despite having Taylor Heineke as their quarterback which is definitely a more unorthodox type of QB Dan Snyder pressured the front office to trade for Carson Wentz yes ladies and gentlemen if you were wondering why the commanders traded for Wentz Dan Snyder was the reason why and ultimately the commanders would go ahead and trade for Carson Wentz now Carson Wentz wasn't necessarily horrific with the Washington commanders so far but to give you an idea of how much of a non-factor this move has been look no further than the Washington commanders Super Bowl odds prior to the trade and after the trade during the time Carson Wentz was the quarterback for the Washington commanders they won two out of their six games Wentz threw for 10 touchdowns and six interceptions which was on pace for a significantly more erratic season than his time in Indianapolis and he had a QBR of 32.4 so far now Wentz would be the starting QB for the Washington Commanders until he would suffer an injury to I believe it was a finger injury and when Taylor Heineke came in I don't know what happened it seemed like this team was revived I mean from watching them literally copy the Kirk Cousins airplane chain video which I thought was also kind of cute because he was like drinking beers out of a cooler to the fact that he has the same completion percentage and has led the Washington Commanders to more wins during his time as the starting QB this year in much less games and as a result Ron Rivera originally didn't know who should be the starting QB once Wentz was fully healthy there's been multiple headlines throughout this week stating that he's torn between Taylor Heineke and Carson Wentz even if Carson Wentz is healthy like it even says here Rivera said he's still not sure if Carson Wentz will be activated off injured reserve this week after missing the last four games with a fractured right ring finger it was originally thought that the injury would sideline him for four weeks if that's the case then Wentz could be activated this week however even if he's available there's a good chance Washington sticks with his replacement Taylor Heineke though he lacks Wentz's size or arm the commanders have gone three and one with Heineke starting and sprung a big upset on Monday night against the Philadelphia Eagles I'm gonna be honest I think this was the right call but I think the execution of this call could have been significantly better if I'm the head coach of the Washington commanders in this situation Ron Rivera I would just say that hey Taylor Heineke has the hot hand we have the luxury of being able to ride with Taylor Heineke it's not that Carson Wentz is being benched it's that we want to make sure he's 100% before we even entertain anything but here's the thing that's not what Ron Rivera said it's something I appreciate about Riverboat Ron is the fact that he is very transparent and very straightforward the article says when Rivera decides on a starter he would first meet with the players involved and then inform the team that would not happen until Wednesday morning at the earliest you have to look at the momentum and what the mood of the team is there are a lot of factors I mean I don't know you guys let me know in the comment section does this mean that 
Carson Wentz lost his locker room? I'm unsure. I think you could tell that everyone just wants Taylor Heineke to succeed. Just as a football fan, I'm a Cowboy fan and I want the Washington Commanders to fail. But something about the underdog story of Taylor Heineke versus the former number two overall pick that's had opportunity after opportunity to prove that he's a franchise cornerstone QB just makes me feel like I want Taylor Heineke to succeed. Now, ultimately, we do have the result of this. We know what the decision is, but it's important to know why this decision was made. You see, the Washington Commanders aren't necessarily known for their offensive line. Despite this, Taylor Heineke is able to make lemonade out of lemons here because according to Sam for TR, Taylor Heineke was pressured at a higher rate when he faced off against the Green Bay Packers 51.4% of his dropbacks than Carson Wentz was in any start of his. But because Heineke can move and fully grasps his offense, he just took one sacks and it was one of the team's better games this year. It's kind of funny. It's like everywhere that Carson Wentz goes, there's some sort of subsequent offensive line issue. But I think it's a little bit more important than that. I mean, in addition to this, the captain of the Washington Commanders, as you could tell after Ron Rivera gave his speech where he said his mom, who may she rest in peace, his mom would have been proud. Terry McLaurin took over the locker room and that should give you an idea of who the captain of the Washington Commanders is. Now, why this is important is in week 10, according to Next Gen Stats, Terry McLaurin was targeted on a season high 38% of his routes in week 10. He has been targeted at a higher rate in four straight games since Taylor Heineke took over at QB. McLaurin's target rate by QB, Heineke is 30% and Wentz is 16%. You know, that's something I also really noticed because I have Terry McLaurin in one of my fantasy leagues. And the moment that Taylor Heineke took over as quarterback, Terry McLaurin had a significantly higher rate of success in terms of his production. Now, you might be thinking, Mike, this is because Terry McLaurin was going up against inferior defenders during the time that Taylor Heineke was quarterback. I mean, dude, you saw it on Monday Night Football. Terry McLaurin faced off against Darius Slay, as a matter of fact. He faced Darius Slay on 19 of his 29 routes, a 66% shadow, and he got five of seven targets for 90 yards with Slay as the nearest defender. The most yards given up to a receiver by Slay since week 15, 2021, which was 51 yards also against McLaurin, who guess who happened to be his quarterback when that happened as well? Yeah, exactly. So at this point, Carson Wentz is in a lot of trouble. I mean, not only is Taylor Heineke being named the starting QB, but have you looked at who the next opponent is for the Washington Commanders? It's the worst team in the NFL! Yeah! Taylor Heineke is officially going to be starting at quarterback as the Commanders go up against the Houston Texans. Now, don't get me wrong. The Texans have some good defensive players, Derek Stingley Jr. primarily. But dude, imagine he goes in and defeats the Texans and has another good game. And then at that point, what do you do? Do you officially bench Carson Wentz? If you bench Carson Wentz, what's next for Carson and Wentz. That's what I'm saying when I say, damn, the NFL is so unpredictable. I could have never guessed this would happen to Carson Wentz. A part of me feels some empathy for the guy, and a part of me feels like he didn't really get the greatest chance to gel with this team. I think Carson Wentz can make more throws than Taylor Heineke can, but Taylor Heineke knows the offense significantly more and has the support of his locker room, which just puts Carson Wentz in a very tough situation, man, because it seems like every time he gets injured, he gives his backup an opportunity to shine, whether it's Nick Foles or Taylor Heineke in this instance. And it's just unfortunate because now maybe this offseason, you see the Washington Commanders get rid of Carson Wentz. At that point, does he go to a new team to try to be a franchise cornerstone? Or do you think at this point, he's just relegated to being a backup QB? Well, after they take on the Houston Texans, Washington Commanders take on the Atlanta Falcons, which no disrespect to the Falcons, that's also a pretty winnable game, bro. And then after that, you enter December football. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we're already there. And they face off against the New York Giants, then have a bye, then face off against the Giants again, then the 49ers, and 
than the Browns before closing out their season versus the Dallas Cowboys. So without a doubt, definitely a very interesting career trajectory for Carson Wentz and the Commanders. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about all this, man. Do you think the Commanders are making the right call by officially continuing forward with Taylor Heineke? Or do you think they should give Carson Wentz another chance? Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about all this, man. Aside from that, I'm your boy, Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.